Hello to all you filmmakers and specifically Premiere Pro users. I'm Dom, the resident editor here at Olufemi, and boy oh boy do I have a treat for you today. If you're like me, shooting, editing, cutting, tweaking, color correcting, experimenting, sound designing, epic making, then you'll know the importance of this one saying, time is money. So if you're a filmmaker, if you're involved in any form of video creation and you do some aspect of the editing, then I have five tips for you to help speed up your workflow in Premiere Pro and thus save you valuable time. I can tell you I don't have money, but what I do have are a very particular set of skills skills I've acquired over a very long career. My career may not be as long as Liam's, but I have learned a few things along the way. First up is a little trick I discovered by accident. So one day I was editing away, minding my own business. I was at the start of my timeline and I had a clip selected. I had a browser window open on my second monitor and thinking that my Chrome application was selected, I typed a number into my numpad. That's the numbers thing on the side of your keyboard, in case you didn't know. No numbers showed up in my Chrome browser, but when I look back at my timeline in Premiere Pro, my clip had jumped. And that's when I discovered this neat little trick. The way it works is this. In your sequence window, you have this timestamp that matches the location of your playhead. You can move around your sequence in a few ways. You can use your mouse to move around the playhead to the part of your sequence that you want to preview. You can click and drag the timestamp itself, or you can choose a moment by typing in the actual timestamp you want to go to. For example, if I want to go to the one minute mark, I click on my timestamp and change it to 00010000. The first two digits are the hour mark, the second two are the minute mark, the third are the seconds, and the fourth are the frames. For example, if you want to go to the one hour mark at two minutes, three seconds, and four frames, you would type in 01020304. See? We're at the one hour mark with two minutes, three seconds, and four frames. If you have a numpad on your keyboard, you don't have to click and select the timestamp like this to enter numbers. If I'm in my sequence with nothing selected, I can type in 010000, and it'll take me to the one minute mark. If I only typed in 01, it would take me to frame one. 0100 takes me to one second. 0100. 010000 takes me to one minute. 010000. The trick, however, is this. If you have a clip selected, you can use the timestamp method using your numpad to quickly move a clip to another part of your sequence. Or if you don't have a numpad, you can click and enter the numbers up here. Say for example, I have a bunch of clips bundled at the end that I want to work into my edit. I click the first one to make sure it's selected and I want to move it to the one minute mark. So I'll go over to my numpad and I'll type in 010000. And just like that, my clip has moved to the one minute mark. Now, I know that you can easily move clips with your mouse, but this trick is useful for when you're working on a bigger project or you're on a laptop with limited screen space and you don't wanna waste time zooming in and out. The next tip is very similar in that it also allows you to move around your sequence faster, but in a different way. I have this sequence where again, I have a few clips at the end that I've copied into my timeline and I wanna use at a specific point in my project. With my limited screen space, just using one monitor, previously, I would have to do this. Go to the end of the sequence, select my clip, cut the clip, zoom out, find the point I want the clip to be at, zoom in, paste it, and then position it. That was my old method and highly inefficient. What I do now is this. When I'm editing and I know I want to add another clip to a part that I'm working on, what I'll do is go to the point I want to insert the clip or somewhere near it and with nothing selected in the timeline, I'll right click up here and select add marker. You can also hit M on your keyboard to do the same. This adds a marker into your timeline that you can easily snap to. I'll show you now. I'll go to the end of my sequence where I have the clip that I want to work into my edit. I'll right click it and select cut. Next, I'll use the following keyboard shortcut to go back to the marker I just placed. The shortcut is Control shift m On Mac, this is Command shift m This jumps us back in the timeline to the marker we placed, and with Video Layer 5 selected, so I don't overwrite any of the footage on the lower layers, I'm gonna paste the clip into the timeline and then move it to where I want it to be. If I easily wanted to go back to the spot where I have my extra clips sitting, I can also place a marker near them. And when I'm wanting to skip forward to that marker, I can use the keyboard shortcut shift m the shortcut is the same on Mac, to jump to them easily. I'll select another clip, cut it, and use Control shift m to jump back in time and place this clip too. Again, if you're working with limited screen space or want to save time zooming in and out, this might be helpful. The third tip is not one of shortcuts or jumping around sequences, but it can save you a bunch of time as well. When I first started out, I would edit my footage, put it together in a sequence, and then when reviewing my edit, I would think, hey, it would look really cool if I added that one drone shot into this part. So I'd go over to my shortlist, 
and not remembering where the one shot was that I wanted, wastes time trying to find it. I'm still not super amazing at doing this myself, but color coding your footage can save you a bunch of time just by narrowing down the categories of footage you're working with so you can find shots easier. In my sequence, I have a bunch of wintry shots and the first thing I'm gonna do is organize them by shot type. We have drone shots, people in the snow, and animals in the snow. Now, this is just a very basic categorization, and the categories you use will depend on your project. So find what works best for you. So now that I've got my shots organized by shot type, I'm gonna select all the drone shots, right click, and select label, and I'm gonna give them a color. Hmm, let's choose mango. Similarly, I'll select all the people shots, right click, label, and select the Caribbean label. And for the animals in the snow, right click, label, and I'll select rose. Now I know that if I'm looking for a particular shot, I can easily browse through the mango ones to find my drone shots, the Caribbean ones if I'm looking for people, and the rose ones if I'm looking for animals. Tip number four is also a categorization tip, but this one is related to your bins. When working in Premiere Pro, you'll know that all the assets you import into your project live in the project window. When you've only got a few assets to work with, it's not too hard to find something you're looking for. But when you're working with multiple files, it's quite easy to get lost. So why not make your own life easier? If you right click in the window, you can select new bin. This is essentially just a folder into which you can drag and drop any of your assets. And you can literally name this whatever you want. Raw footage, source files. You can even name it super awesome footage I shot because I'm so awesome. The sky is the limit. Just like the color coding tip, the bin names and categories you choose will depend on your own preference. For the edits I do for the channel, this is what my typical folder structure looks like. The last and final tip, tip number five, doesn't necessarily live inside Premiere Pro, but it will save you bunches of time. One thing that I highly suggest is building a little library of your favorite assets that you use a lot. LUTs, film grain, fonts, graphics, lower thirds, music, stock footage. Having a bunch of these assets compiled in one place makes it so much easier to find that one video template, that one sound effect, or maybe that one lower third that you're looking for when you've just opened a new project. Make your own life easier and save yourself from digging through folders and hard drives trying to find an asset that you need. Trust me, I've wasted hours of time in my editing life before I finally got around to doing this for myself. And hey! Here's a bonus tip on top of that tip. If you can't be bothered making all those folders and doing all that organization, or you don't want to waste valuable hard drive space, or maybe you just don't want to waste all that time compiling everything together, there's an even easier way to have a library of literally thousands of assets all in one place. Sign up for Envato Elements, it's only $9 for the first month through the link in the description, and you'll get access to thousands of assets with unlimited downloads and without the need to store all of them on your computer. Just grab the ones you want. And that's it guys, I hope you got something out of it. If you did, please like and subscribe, and do let me know if you'd like to see more tutorials like this in the future.